This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Featherston versus Johnson. You two are coming up on your ninth anniversary, but cheating allegations have thrown your relationship into turmoil. Ms. Featherston, tell us why you are here. Well, I'm here, Yana, today to bring my husband, Shahid, to court, because I have questions that need answers. I understand. I mean, my rela we've been in together for eight years now. I am a transgender woman, oh. and I feel that maybe, you know, he's losing his interest in me. I mean, our sex life has started to deteriorate. It's a lot of unanswered questions and things going on, so I need answers. I need help. You know, we hear a lot of couples when one person is accused the other of cheating that one of the first signs is the sex life decreases. Mr. Johnson, when you have this hanging over your relationship, what is it, what is it like when you all are together? What is home like? That's the bottom line. Well, it's hectic at home, though, because she don't believe me. And, like, if I go to the store, I'll run to the store and run home. Because if I'm gone too long, she'll think I'm doing something else, though. Uh -huh. Just like when we hanging out, and if I look at someone too long, she say I'm eye contacting. Like, my <laughs> eyes have mouth, has a mouth, and it'll talk to them. Like, how am I doing this? You know what I'm saying? I can't help the way that I look, or if somebody look at me twice or something like that, but I'm not eye talking. I love her from inside out. Uh -huh. <laughs> And all of this is causing just a strain on your relationship. Yes, it is, because I have no friends. I don't never stop at a bar and have my own self a cocktail and just sit there for a minute, because she'll be thinking that something else is going on. So, Ms. Featherstone, tell me about your meeting. Well, that's an interesting story, Yana, because I... actually I was walking down the street coming from the grocery store. And like I said, I am transgender in the community. I, you know, used to cook Sunday dinners for the uh, kids in the community that was less fortunate and this and that. And I was walking down the street, actually, and I saw this fine red bone walking. Some pretty <laughs> blue, greenish eyes, and his hair was even longer then. And I was like, hey, handsome, how you doing? You know, and he looked at me and kept on walking. So, cooking the Sunday dinner, everybody coming in, the kids coming in, lo and behold, who walked through my door? Shahid. Oh! And uh -huh. three months down the line, me and him became an item. All right, so you saw him, he showed up, and you locked it down. Yes, I did. I and know. You, this you woman know so... what she want. She <laughs> was... <laughs> and wait, I can understand that, because I saw somebody at a skating rink, and I was like, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I okay. know what that's about. I yeah. know what that's about. But we're here. <laughs> what are the... I mean, after all this, you figure it out, you all get together. Why are we here? What have the warning signs been? Okay, and I... Well, another sign is our sex life. I mean, like I said, you know, our, things have deteriorated. We used to do it five, seven times a day. Like I said... Oh. Wait, five <laughs> to seven times a day? Yeah, yes. right? yeah. When we first got together, yes, we, we yes, used to we go did. Woo! Five, seven times a day. I'm surprised like they standing up. Jobs. We was young bunnies. <laughs> yeah, we were. We was young and dumb. How did y'all hold just... down jobs and have friends or <laughs> go to the grocery store Wait, or... pay a light bill. <laughs> yeah, how did we pull over go <laughs> quickie in the car and stuff like that? You know, just our sex life was very spicy. And so, like I said, we've been together eight years, going on nine. So, probably, like, the fourth or fifth year, you know, things started to slack off. So, I said, let me do whatever I have to do to keep my man happy. You know what I'm saying? So, you don't have to lie to me. You don't have to cheat on me. What you want to do, baby? You want to have a threesome? Well, let, let's get it in. Let's do it. So, you know, I did everything. I did splits. I did back bends. Whatever I need to do to make my man happy. So, therefore, you don't have to cheat on me. And we've done all of those things. And now... To, to this day, like, we haven't had sex in months. So I'm wondering, like, are you not attracted to me anymore? You know, watch porn or whatever, and he will look at more porn with women instead of transgender women. So that makes me feel some type of way. It's like, is you into me or not? And so but, you... But that's, go ahead, that's, a high, that's a high bar to try to maintain. I mean, five to seven times a day, there's got to be some decline somewhere. But, but that's not what she's saying. She's, she said, OK, I saw the decline. I addressed it by saying, well, what about this? What about that? And if he said this or that, he did, she did it. But now she's saying, I'm watching what he's looking at in porn. He's looking at nat natural-born women. Right. And she's now wondering, okay, I'm transgender woman. 
Is he no longer into me? Is he into... Does he want to be with a natural-born woman? As, Am yeah, I but, right? Yes. Yeah, but yeah. that's not yes. it at all, though. It's that we went through a financial stage in life. You know how everybody go through a midlife crisis? It seems like that's what we at. We just recently lost our car. I'd be working 11 to 7 at night, and i still be trying to maintain throughout the day, you know what I'm saying? So we're going through a lot of other things that led this to be like this. It's only been like this for a year, you know what I'm saying? So, so you admit there's been a decrease in your sex life? Yeah, this last year, yeah, up to this point. The fact of my birthday last year, or whatever, I had a birthday party, and, you know, I had it at the club, I do perform and stuff, do shows and stuff at the club, and we had to take separate cars. And I had to have him drive one of my, couple of my family members and one of their promiscuous friends, which is a female. <laughs> And when I mean promiscuous, it's very promiscuous. And we have to go to the club. If you mind, I can show you on the screen. Sure, come over to the plaza. Okay. My birthday party, June 24th. My birthday, y'all. Okay. All right. And this is our house right here. And now this is where the club is. And it probably take about a good 25, 30 minutes to get there. Okay. So we all left at the same time. Now, mind you, Shahid, this young man here left right behind me, pulled out the house the same. Look at that car. We're supposed to be in the same direction, head to the club. Okay. And it took them two and a half hours Whoa. to get there. Him and this promiscuous very friend. promiscuous. I mean, <laughs> very, very promiscuous woman. You take 30 minutes and they take two and a half to two three and hours. And a half hours to get there. And you are thinking, were you doing something with yes. this babe? The yes, promiscuous that... babe. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Yeah. Why did it take you two and a half hours because to get to a 20 minutes where something's 20 minutes away? Because she had us end up leaving and she going who? to pick up another friend. My wife, I'm saying. My wife had us end up leaving to go pick up another friend with one of her family members. So we pick up the other friend. Plus, remind you, she has food ordered, like wings. You know, you got to wait on them, like 100 wings. So we had to go pick them up. Oh, this is and ordered, remind you, at first, I'm already a little tipsy because it's her birthday. So, you know, you start in the morning, and this is at night where her birthday's at the club. So we're already tipsy. So and doing this ride with that. this overly promiscuous friend, uh, did she come on to you? No, she didn't. Did you come on to her? No, I did not. So there was nothing going on during this car ride with you and this overly promiscuous friend? No, <laughs> nothing but agitation and just getting, you know, very aggravated, really, because it was taking so long and they want to stop here and, you know, so certain stuff going on. Ms. Featherston, you <clears throat> believe that something else went down? Definitely, right. because once again, like I said, he said they went to go pick up somebody else, but they never came with the person they was going to go pick up. Mm -hmm. So, the food was pre-ordered already before we even pulled off. They had already called and said the food is ready. So, once again, two and a half hours on a 25, 30 minute drive. And that the only thing that shows up, up, him, this promiscuous friend, and the food. That's it? Yes. Do you have any other reasons to believe that he's cheating? I just recently worked the polls when they was doing the election for the judges and, oh. the and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I'm glad you cleared that I, up. I was like... <laughs> I'm glad you cleared that up you know, for she us. Yeah. I was like, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Not that poll, Your Honor. And, Hell, I was worried for a minute. And uh, <laughs> we both worked the poll or whatever <clears throat> and everything. And one of our friends, had, one of my friends came to pick us up. And my friend said, oh, I'm tired. Can you drive? I'm like, oh, I'll drive or whatever, this and that. So we went to get our little work checks or whatever, coming back. And lo and behold, the police pulled us over. It's at nighttime, like 9, 10 o'clock. And they pulled us over for a bus to tell light. Okay. So, I'm like, okay, I got my ID, but I had my state ID instead of my driver's license. And the police officer, he was like, oh, you're lying to me. This, that's not your real name. I'm like, this is my state ID. This is my real name. But we're going to take you in, long story short, and run your name. So, they had, took me in. A couple of hours went by after they did all of or whatever, gave me my first phone call. I called my phone. You know what I'm saying? It just ring, go straight to voicemail. I called my phone about 10 times, straight to voicemail. Then, like, the 11, 12th time I called, I hear some uh -uh, moan and groan or whatever, then the phone hung up real quick. All right, Josh, you left your woman in jail? I didn't leave her in jail. They took her to jail. But I did not wait outside. No, I didn't, Your Honor. I did not. But the fact doesn't matter is... But, but here's the thing. Why didn't you answer the phone? Because it was dead and it was 1 in the morning. And I didn't have nowhere to charge it up or no charger. But she's nothing. saying that at some point somebody picked up the phone and she heard noise like somebody having sex. And that's not true, though. There was no sex going on. And it had to be something Well, what was the noise also, then? Because I Somebody picked phone. up. Who was it that picked up the phone? I don't know. I had left it charging inside of a uh, restaurant because they said they would charge it for me and they put it behind the counter and charge it for me. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right, Ms. Featherston... There was no sex going on in the back. Ms. Featherston, you in jail. 
What is it that you... Exactly what did you hear when the phone picked up? Uh-uh. And then I got... No. <laughs> No, that's this not a, true. Uh-huh. That's not mind true. You, that's not like true. A, you know, mom. I was asking that question, right? Now, Wait a minute, because that just sounds like uh, uh, like somebody's trying uh, to figure it out. Uh, what? You know? No, I don't. That's something. what I'm saying. Okay, this is kind well, of well, or like a get porn to... or something. But like I said, I called so many times, and when I did get out at six I'm in the morning, I say, "So where you been?" And this and that. Oh, the phone was dead. Oh no, the phone wasn't dead because I called so many times. Let me see the phone. So I get the phone, the entire call log is erased. All the texts and the phone is erased. Now, mind you, this is my phone I'm calling that he has. So why is all... So that means either you've been called to talk together with one of my girlfriends... No, or that ain't... That ain't something uh-uh. went on. So why would he... De- why erased. would you delete all the stuff from her phone? Her phone? Because I was calling asking for help with other people and I don't like her to see that, so I erased everything, though. But I did not don't try to do it intentionally like I was cheating, no, because I was asked that don't question and well, I did not why, cheat. Why do you think she would care to, of, of who you asked to get her out? Right. Because of the way that we are now, though. We outside and I'm looking at someone too long, she thinks I'm cheating with them or I talk exactly. with them. But, Mr. Johnson, so that's why I have no friends. Your no story's company. not making sense Excuse because me. first no you say the no phone companion. is dead and it's charged and doesn't work, and now you're saying that you didn't want her to see who you would call, you would call her for help? I mean, was the phone dead? Dead or not. I did have juice, though. I did call for help, though, but I'm saying that did not happen, though. It was dead. It was dead. I'm saying the not uh not. and the uh did not happen on that phone. And it was dead when she was calling. Well, see, here's the thing. Somebody who's used to having sex five to seven times a day... Right? Uh-huh. I think knows what it sounds like. Right? I mean, right. if anybody's an expert on what it sounds like, it's somebody who's doing five to seven times a day. Yes. Of course. Go ahead. On top of that, to add on to that, when I got my phone back... Before I got locked up or whatever, the phone was clear. The screen was clear. When I got my phone back from him, the screen was cracked and everything. So my thing yeah, is... because I broke it. When I heard the them on the ground, they must have dropped the phone. Somebody done stepped on it in the panic and That ain't what everything. happened, though. You know... So your phone was so broke? Pro- no, it pro- was deleted. All the stuff was deleted? Erased. Yep. They gonna prove And it. you have no idea who he called... Uh, Who and, he texted? And he's not nothing. Transfer. Action one plus one is two all day. He'll tell you it's four and constantly will tell no. you that it's four. You understand what I'm saying? So you have right. no... The, the trust in your relationship has been There's totally, no utterly There's destroyed. No There's no trust at all. Because you and got... Exactly. You all have been together eight years. Exactly. Yeah, eight years. Unse- like inseparable, too. Inseparable for eight years, yeah. but you got this hanging over you, and you said that if he's cheating... I'm tired. I got to go. You got to go. I, got no more, I ain't got no more time. I know I'm a good catch, and before I get too old, honey, I want to build my relationship with somebody that's, that know my worth. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know I'm worth more than what I got going on. And as you should, if I'm cheating. eight years... I and, Mr. Johnson, you broken. recognize what's on the line here, don't you? Yeah, I know what's on the line. Yeah, I already... You know what's at risk. Yeah, I do. Mr. Keller, I think we got enough information. I think we've heard enough. Tell me what we got. Here's what we're looking at. Mr. Johnson shows up two and a half hours later from a trip that should take about 20 minutes, and you have concerns that he is no longer attracted to you because you're not a natural-born woman. Yeah. And the time when he should be coming to get you out of jail, he's not answering the phone, somebody answers, and you do hear sex noises, and when you get the phone back, all the numbers have been deleted. And all the text messages. And all the text messages. Because of that, this court has done a complete investigation. At this time, the court would like to call licensed private investigator Brett Magleby to determine, is he cheating? Mr. Magleby, how are you? Thanks for being here. Thank you. So, in order to get to the truth regarding the infidelity allegations and Mr. Johnson, you did an eye detect test. Can you please explain how an eye detect test works? During a test, a person sits in front of an eye detect computer. The eye tracking camera monitors involuntary eye movements. During the course of a 30-minute eye detect test, there are more than a million points of data gathered. At the conclusion of the test, a proprietary algorithm analyzes the data collected and provides a truthful or deceptive score. You asked Mr. Johnson a series of questions regarding the allegation. Since being in a relationship with Ms. Featherston, have you had physical sexual contact with anyone Ms. Featherston is not aware of? 
How did he respond to the accusation? He denied having sex with anyone. What did the eye detect test determine? The eye detect test determined that Mr. Johnson was truthful. <laughs> you got to cheat on you for nothing now. All right, Ms. Featherston, what do you have to say to Mr. Johnson? I'm sorry, baby. No, she got to kiss my feet. Oh! oh I'm just playing. We don't know too much now. I don't think that's going to ever happen. But I am sorry. <laughs> oh, Cuz I've, I've, I know I've caused him hell, but it's just that the fact that I... Go on over there. I know you're trying to get I to our like seat. I like that. It's too much. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, man. <laughs> How are you feeling? I feel great now. You all are dating. You've been together for three and a half years. And you've discussed the next step in your relationship. But that next step depends on what happens here today. Is that correct, Mr. Foster? Yes, sir, it is. All right, you've opened this case. Tell us why. Okay, so basically, like you said, I'm honestly, I'm dating now, but not just to date. I'm actually looking for my queen, looking for my wife. Uh, I thought I found someone and... Uh, Suspicion and just her actions, the way she do stuff, is leading me to think differently. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, wait a minute. Hold on, Mr. Cadillac. We got a unicorn. <laughs> we got a unicorn right here. We they live. live. But, you know, you know, your oldest son is like that. He was kind oh, of yeah. a, a one-woman person that likes to settle down. I mean, he's that's just his personality. Yeah, we let like, note to file. But you want that stable <laughs> life. You want you find your queen, but I you can't my... because you think that she is cheating on you. Yeah, I had my fun times. We both had our fun times, and I felt like we both were putting it to the side, but... Uh, it, I, it doesn't seem like it on her part, so... Um, uh, yeah. Let's talk to Miss <laughs> Terry. Terry. No. You, no. You, got a young, you got a young man who's ready to step up to the plate. No. But you're not... He's not ready to step up? No. Okay, tell me why you say no. <laughs> uh, besides him being goofy, always lying and always hiding stuff, he's always accusing me of cheating. And I don't know what more I can do to prove that I'm really in this relationship, but it's, it, I'm really tired of it at this point. So, if I, I love him. Like, I want to be with him, and I want us to really grow and to get somewhere and take the next steps within our relationship, but I can't do that if he's always accusing me of something that I'm not doing. So, Mr. Foster, we've got this tension in your relationship. Did something happen to cause this? What, what went wrong? Recently, with her phone, I, I just feel like her phone is the devil. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> her phone is the devil. Her phone itself is the devil. Like, if you guys have some time, I can show you a demo of what I kind of put together to kind of break down what, what I mean okay. by saying that. Okay, sure. Step over to the I'm monitor, right. please. Her phone is the devil. The phone is the <laughs> devil. I've heard it called a lot of things, but not that one. I want to see this. See, I'm, I'm country, you guys, so I, I like to shoot it like it is, so. <laughs> and, and the phone actually have horns. Wow. Okay. 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 We just well, actually, missing the pitchfork at this point. Like wow. So, uh, basically... Her, she's sneaky. Like, we, like you said, we've been together for going on three plus years now. The sneakiness, like, why can't you look at your a text message when you get it when we're in the car together? Why do I have to go pump gas for you to pull out your phone? Or it's like, it's like little stuff. Like, if I did the same thing, it'd be a problem. But the fact that you do it, I'm insecure because I'm addressing it. So okay. that's the sneakiness. All right, so uh, she's sneaky with her phone. Uh, what else? Uh, next slide. Uh, basically, she goes radio silent. Basically, um, we're in a relationship. It shouldn't be a point where I don't know what you got going on. We should have the utmost communication skills. Like, we're... I'm trying to put my life into you. Like, I should know what's going on. And I don't have a problem with letting you know everything else, what's going on with me. Why do you have to drop off the face of the map when you're so, quote-unquote, busy? I'm a busy woman. Like, I'm not connected to my phone. Like, I put my phone on Do Not Disturb. If I have stuff to do, mm -hmm. I can't be on the phone that distracts me. Like, I'm trying to start my business. I'm trying to just be young, live my life. But he's always texting me, like, hey, what you doing? Where you at? Where, who you with? Like, what, what you ate? I'm like, I, I have stuff to do. Like, I need to put my phone down. That's annoying. I think he's lavishing her with attention. I don't know that it's being, you That's know, That's not attention. <laughs> I... That is not attention. That's not attention. No, no that's there's. Overbearing. That's so that's what we have thing. here, Mr. Cutler, is too much and not enough. All right, go uh, ahead. What so else we got? Sneaky, radio silent. She goes what radio else? silent. Next slide would be um, just social media in itself. Yeah. Like she says she is a businesswoman. I, I'm understanding of all that, but basically, when when we chilling and pop seeing your phone, ding ding, all this notes, uh, Snapchat, Instagram notification, Facebook notification, but you don't never check it. 
But back to the sneaky, it's like when I'm not, not around, I see you checking it then. If you're a businesswoman, why can't you hop on your business and go ahead and check it while I'm right here? That's because what it should be. I'm giving you my attention. It's like you complain that I don't give you attention. You complain that I'm being too sneaky. Your Honor, can but I when finish? I'm around you, like I'm giving you the attention that you're asking for, but you want me to be on my phone. Okay, Mr. Foss, let me have you step back to the podium. Oh, right. I mean, Ms. Terry, uh, she makes a good point. Ms. I was going to say, she was you're she giving made a him good point. attention. Right. I mean, you have people complaining about you're always on the phone when we're together, you're always on the phone when we're together. So, this is her chance to spend time with you and when she's. I mean, could you be complaining if she was always on the phone when you were with her, right? Just, Mr. Cullen, I, I honestly, I, something slipped my mind a second. I seized the opportunity to go into her direct messages and I saw some stuff that kind of just like added fuel to why I'm thinking the way I'm thinking. I saw messages like hard eyes and it's your business related, but I'm seeing hard eyes and winky faces, I can't emoji, control that. emoticons. I also agree you can't control that, but at the same time, when a guy is saying, I want to see you again, again implies it's happened I've already. I've seen right? you before. Yeah, so it, yeah, it's happened before. A again, it's the second time, second, third time, possibly. I don't know. When somebody takes it to that level and they step the lines of, okay, we're doing this business and personal, and you start flirting, I don't respond to that. Like, he just sees what people are sending me, and I can't control that. And you know what? I understand your point, but I don't agree with it 100%. He doesn't see you shutting it down. It's like, well, I can't control what other people do, so if they want to send me flirty messages, they want to send me all this, you know. That's, I think that's where your concern is. Am I right? Yes, sir. I, okay. I honestly feel like a queen would do that. Like, it should be known to shut it down. So this whole thing with the phone and, and her messages and all that, that's what's giving you some ideas that make you think she's cheating. Not just that. Why do you think she's cheating now? I was about to say, not just that. Honestly, um... The last few weeks, uh, last few months, she's been working on her business, like she says, and I'm very supportive of it. I, I, I like no, it. No, you're I'm not. Down. Oh. No, you're not. What what kind of business is this? I own my own candle company. Candle? Yeah. You like, make, you make like candles? Burn, yeah. Like you, make oh, okay, candles. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so she's got this candle business. Why do you think she's cheating? So, basically, I was headed to her house, and I did text her and let her know, like, hey, I'm on the way. And she texts me back, but I'm driving. I don't text and drive because I'm a good citizen. Oh, my but, God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, I didn't... <laughs> the look on her get, face, man. <laughs> I didn't get the response text of, wait, she was telling me not to come yet. But I was already there. I'm in the parking lot, so I'm coming in. So, as I come in, I go upstairs. I see her doing the candle stuff, and I greet her. We hug and stuff. As soon as I let go of the hug, I see a guy sitting on her bed. A like, in, a bed, in the bedroom? I get you in the candle business, but when that candle in the bedroom, what kind of business is that? Like, I don't... <laughs> it don't really add up. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. Miss Terry, now we're talking candles in the bedroom. I mean, oh. how, how, how... I mean, how big is the candle <laughs> business? <laughs> really, Mr. Color? That's what we doing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's talking about her business. She runs her business, and mm -hmm. I want to know... You got, now you got candles in the bedroom, candle making in the bedroom. Is, oh that, is that all that's being made in the bedroom? That is all that's being made in the bedroom. It was nothing other than literally working on my candles. So you walk in, you see your girlfriend in her bedroom with another man. Uh, what happened? What, yeah, what'd you say to him? Yeah, <laughs> it was like a, a greeting, like, hey, and he was just being all normal, like, trying to act like it wasn't nothing, but it just... You can feel like your man intuition it kicked in. Wasn't like, it just didn't, it didn't. Man intuition. Yeah, right. we got one too. <laughs> okay, now. You know, all right. You know, as, as quiet as it's kept. Very men, quiet, like silent. No, as quiet <laughs> as it's kept, men have intuition too. We got common sense. We can, we can see when things are not like something's really? going on. <laughs> is there anything else that makes you think that she is in fact cheating? Okay, the main thing, and this one kind of really hurt me the most, like, I'm a sneaker person. Okay. Uh, I didn't really get into it at the beginning, but we basically met in Albany, Georgia, and we both were working at a shoe company. And this is after the candle situation. I come to her house, and I... Um, basically, I was chilling, she was gone, and I was looking at her closet, and she likes to give me stuff. So I see um, a nice sneaker box, like a nice brand. Well, Your Honor, I, uh, I wear a size 13. Uh-huh. That's the shoe in question right here. Okay. That's any size 11. Okay. I, uh... <laughs> Oh, so it wasn't your size? It was not my size. So she... A, so you're in a relationship, so she should know your shoe size. <laughs> and, she, and, and she's your girlfriend. She should know. Yeah. So, Ms. Terry, so, how do you make a mistake like that? 
Well, it's the mall, it's a Saturday, I have stuff to do, I'm literally trying to get in and out. I tell them the shoe size I need, they bring me out the box, I check out. I didn't think nothing of it. Okay. So when he mentioned it that it was the wrong shoe size, I didn't even realize it until he brought it up. So literally, uh -huh. I took the shoes back, and then he's like, well, where's the receipt for the shoes? I'm like, I took them back. You're accusing me of cheating. You don't get no receipt. You don't get no new shoes. Like, that's it. You're done. Okay. Right, I'm done. I'm not getting you no shoes. You're accusing me of cheating. All right, so Mr. Foster, I mean, this makes mistakes sense. happen. You're on. Your Honor, this is a, a big mistake and a lot of coincidences for this to be one of those. Basically, long story short, the shoe that she says she returned, I have a coworker that says he basically received a pair of shoes from a girl and I know he wears a size 11. So when this shoe comes up missing, I basically see the shoe on his foot within a week later. The same exact oh, shoe. Oh, okay. These are premium shoes. You can't just go get it all willy-nilly. What's okay. the, the chances of him having the exact shoe, same size, and the, the, the cherry that takes it all? He's told me before that he, before he knew that me and you were involved, he's told me he had the looks for you anyway. And also, he told me he got the shoe from a girl that we work with. All three of us work together. Miss Terry, I mean, okay. You see how this looks from our standpoint, right? I, I know how it looks. Okay. It looks like, okay, it was a mistake. They make more than one pair of shoes. That's number one. <laughs> number two, if we're dating at the job, I can't even imagine how many other people are dating at the job. And just because somebody has the looks for me, I'm cute. I cannot help that. Like, <laughs> that's just like... All right, know your truth. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so, Mr. Cutler, I think we got enough. I think we have... We, we understand why they're here. We do. We do. <laughs> they are missing on so many different oh, levels. Oh, so many different levels. So here's what we got out of... This is the evidence. One, he thinks that she's going out on dates with other men. She thinks he's giving shoes to other men. And the killer, that she's making wax and burning wax with another man that was in her bedroom. <laughs> For all these reasons, Mr. Foster is sure that Miss Terry is cheating. And he has said, look, I'm not out here dating just to date. I'm dating to look for my queen, for my future bride, and I don't want to waste no time. So if she's cheating, he's going to lace up his size 13s and he's going to moonwalk on out of this relationship. <laughs> Am I right, Mr. Foster? Yes, ma'am, just to show. To help you all figure it out, this court has done a full and a complete investigation. At this time, the court will call licensed polygraph examiner Kendall Show to determine is she cheating? Long people call Mr. Show in. Kendall Show. Would you state your credentials, please, for the court? Uh, Your Honor, I uh, wanted to be an FBI agent since I was a sophomore in high school. Mm -hmm. I decided that's what I wanted to do. I was privileged enough to do that. When I retired, I was chief of the entire FBI's polygraph program, relocated to Knoxville, Tennessee, where I set up my own practice. All right. Now, you conducted a polygraph examination of Miss Terry, correct? Yes, Your Honor. You asked Miss Terry, have you had sexual intercourse with a male friend that was sitting on your bed who you said was helping you with your candle business? What was her response to that question? She said no, Your Honor. What did the polygraph determine? The polygraph determined that she was being Truthful, Your Honor. No, so, no candles being burned. In the bedroom. In the bedroom. At least not with other men. Not with other men. There you go. You asked Miss Terry, did you purchase the size 11 sneakers for a man other than Mr. Foster? What was her response to that question? She said no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that she was being truthful, Your Honor. All right, Miss Terry's already chewing on him. She's like, I told you. <laughs> The last question was, you asked Miss Terry, since getting back together with Mr. Foster, have you had sexual intercourse with another man? What was her response? She said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined on this one that she was also being truthful. <laughs> Miss Terry, 
<laughs> I'm tired, and and I'm glad that you know he has the proof that I haven't been cheating on him, and I'm really trying to be in this relationship. And I really, I really need you to stop accusing me of stuff that I'm not doing. It's not fair to me, and it's not healthy for me. <laughs> <laughs>